Good morning. How are you this morning? We have been having an interesting VBS week. And I bet you have watched some of the videos that the teachers have put together to have VBS. It's strange we're having VBS this way. We certainly miss having you in class, having time for crafts, sharing snacks. But we will make use of this technology God has given us at this time to have VBS online. And we've been learning about diligence. We've been learning about faith, obedience, self-control, and honesty. And today's lesson will look a bit more on honesty. We're going to look at a young man, a young man called Joash, who became a king when he was only seven years old. And during his reign, when he was king, he made sure that the temple was built. And guess what? It was built with money that the people of Israel gave. And they handled the money with complete honesty. What is honesty? I believe you ask yourself. Honesty, according to the dictionary, it's a quality of being honest. And honest, an honest person is a person honorable in principles, intentions, who is upright and who is fair. In English, we talk about synonyms. And as another synonym for honesty is integrity, trustworthy, and truthful. So we can say an honest person is someone who's trustworthy, who's, on, who's uh, truthful, and who upholds integrity. I was going to say who's honest. A person who's honest is someone with integrity, trustworthy, and someone who's truthful. Let's look at the story of Joash. And all our stories come from the Bible. And before we even start, we are going to say a short prayer. And then we'll be able to look at the story from the book of 2 Kings. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful for this morning. And we are grateful that we have the opportunity to learn from your word. And even as we learn about King Josh and about honesty, we pray that each child who will watch this lesson will be able to choose for themselves to be honest to say the truth all the time. Help us to listen and to learn from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 1 to 16 gives a story of King Joash. In the previous chapter, we had seen that King Joash had been made king at a tender age of seven years. He became king at the age of seven and he ruled as a king for 40 years. So till he was 47 years. And the Bible tells us that he was honest, he did what was right, and he pleased the Lord. And the time he was king, there was a gentleman who was called Jehoiada, who was a priest at the time. So King Joash, as he has been reading the law of the Lord, knew about the temple and the work of the temple and how long time ago, the temple had the law and people would meet there and listen to the priests reading the law. But at this time, the temple had been run down. The roof had fallen off. Most probably there were some holes on the wall. Everything was in disarray. The chairs had broken. Everything was not working. So King Joash asked the priests to collect all the money that was brought by the Israelites as a sacred offering to the temple and use it to repair the damaged parts of the temple. So he gave an instruction and we know as a king, he gives instructions and other people implement. The same way the president says, do this and there are other people who ensure it is done. This time round, the priests took a lot of time to collect the money such that after 23 years, the temple was not repaired. Imagine, 23 years. The king has been, who was seven years, now he's 30 years, the temple has not been repaired. Remember, he gave an instruction, people did not follow the instruction because they took a lot of time to collect the money. Do you think the king was happy? No, he was not pleased. And the Bible says that very clearly. He was not pleased. He must have been very annoyed. And he called the priest Jehoiada and asked him, what is the problem? So he ordered the priest not to take any more money from the temple, but to collect money from the people. And so 
he asked the priest to ensure that was done. The priest was able to make big boxes. You know the way we have piggy banks where we put coins that we are given? They were told to make big boxes like that with a hole at the top. And people would come and put their money. They come and put their money. They come and put their money. And that money that the people were giving, those are the Israelites, was going to be used to repair their temple. So he, Jehoiada, the priest we talked about, was made the team leader for this task. Let's call it the money collection task because the previous task has not worked. So we are at the money collection task. He was asked to do this and he ensured it was done by placing the big box with a hole to put the money in. Every day, the priests could take the big box to the royal official who was in charge. And whenever it was full, the royal secretary would open it. They remove the money, count it, and then keep it away. And that money was what was used to finally repair the temple. That had taken 23 years. An instruction was given. For 23 years, nothing had happened. And so this money that was collected was put together to repair the temple. This money was used to pay the people who were repairing the temple. They needed people who would go up the roof to repair the roof. They needed people who would work with the stones and seal all the holes that were there. They needed people who were carpenters who would make more new chairs or even repair the chairs that were there. And they needed people who dealt with metal, who worked with metal. They weld the metal together all these people were paid with the money that was collected from the box. Not anything that anyone had brought in terms of offering the money that the people gave that was put in the box. Incidentally, the money was not used for anything else. It was used for repairs. They didn't buy anything new. The Bible clearly tells us they did not buy anything new. They used that money to repair what was already there and to pay the people who repaired it. And in verse 15, I want us to read together verse 15. Verse 15 says, They did not require an accounting from those who, to whom they gave the money to pay the workers because they acted with complete honesty. The money that came from the box was taken to the royal secretary. They counted the money. And when they counted the money, they knew who had worked for how many days. Most probably they paid the people every week or every day or every month we are not told but what they did is that everyone who came to work was paid the money due to them for that day and the money was accounted for properly accounting is where i come and count the money most probably day one we have collected three thousand shillings we put it aside day two we have collected five thousand shillings we put it aside and then we take that money and pay everyone no one came back to check whether they have done the right thing because they took it upon themselves to do the right thing. They accounted for that money with complete honesty. They didn't take some money and put it in their pocket. Oh, I think today 3,000, we have paid the people 2,500. There's change of 500 shillings. I think we can keep that change in my pocket and do something else with it. No, they kept that money there and it added to the money for the following day and they paid the workers. And the Bible tells us complete honesty. All of them worked hard and they restored the temple to the original condition. As solid as ever. The temple that was there in the times of Solomon, because Solomon is one who built the temple when he became king, they repaired it to that condition. When the repairs were finished, the remaining gold and silver was given to the king and Jehoiada who used it to make bowls and other utensils in the temple. That means the money was much more than was needed. It had taken 23 years. They had not done anything. The people were asked to bring your money. They put it there. The people who were asked to account for it did the right thing. They paid the people to repair it. And money was remaining at the end. And they bought utensils and other items for the temple. And what do we learn from this lesson? King Josh became king at the age of seven. And he did what was pleasing to the Lord. When we are given a task, let's do it to the best of our ability because we are there to make God happy. 
he ordered the priest to collect money from people to repair the temple. He gave an order, and this time round, the people obeyed. Joash and Jehoiada, the high priest, were given the money collected from the people, and they used all the money for the repair of the temple. And the remaining money was used to buy the utensils. And God was happy. With who? King Joash, Jehoiada, and all the other people who worked with him. Because none of them took the money and used it for something else. They said this money is for repairing the temple and they did it with complete honesty. Now, I want to mention a little story from the Bible also that we get to see if you don't work with complete honesty, especially when you're dealing with money, there is usually a punishment. In Acts chapter 5, we meet a couple called Ananias and Sapphira who decided to sell their property and bring the money to the apostles, to the disciples, just like everybody else was doing. Previously, we had seen Barnabas had sold part of his property and brought the money to the disciples to help the church as it grew in Jerusalem and expanded to other areas. However, Ananias and Sapphira decided to take a little of the money and keep for themselves and then take the rest to the disciple Peter. When Ananias came and gave to Peter, the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and Peter knew this is not all the money. However, Peter was not demanding that all the money is brought. When he asked Ananias, is this all the money that you got when you sold the land? Ananias confidently said, yes, it is all the money. And what happened to him? Go and read chapter 5 of Acts. He died. He was punished there and then. It was a drastic punishment, but he was punished there and then. His wife wondered three hours later, my husband has not come home. So his wife came to check on him. And Peter asked the same question. Is it all the money that you got from selling the property? And she confidently said, yes, it is all the money. And she also died. And the lesson there is, Peter didn't demand all the money. But God expected both Ananias and Sapphira to say the truth. The truth was, we brought part of the money, the other money, we will use it for this and that at home. That was all they needed to say. But they lied. And here, King Joash reminds us that we are required to be honest with our dealings, especially with regards to money, instructions we are given, just to say the truth if you are not able to do it. Let us do things with complete honesty. And that's God. what God requires us to do. He requires complete honesty from us. And God will give us the strength to be honest. Because we love him, he will remind us quietly through the power of the Holy Spirit to say the truth all the time. And another lesson we learned today is that even as young people, whether you're in class 3, class 7, you are still young, but God can use you. God used King Josh when he was only seven years old. In present day, he would have been in grade two or grade one. But God used him, even as young as he was. We need to be honest to God, to us and to others. If you are trusted to do something, let's do it honestly. Let's do it truthfully. Let's be trustworthy so that even our parents can trust us when we are given a task at home. God expects us to be honest always, okay? And especially when you are dealing with money. When we are young, let us learn about honesty, about being trustworthy, especially with money. I know you as children have been hearing a lot from your parents talking about it, from the news, about this big word called corruption, where we are all going and getting a little money that does not belong to us, and then we take it and use it for ourselves. But that is not right. And as we practice now, if we start practicing early to be honest, we will be able to change the world. Change the world wherever we are by standing for the truth and choosing to be honest. Okay? So let us practice to be honest in small ways when we are young. When you're sent to the shop and there's a little change, don't keep the change in your piggy bank. Take it back to your mother or father and let them be the ones to decide for you what they can give you back the money, they can take it away. But return the change. When you're asked and you're having online classes, 
that you're going to stay on your online class. Don't get tempted to start going to other websites. But let's be honest to do the right thing. It's class time. Let's go on with class. When you're asked, do not do this, do not do that. Let's be truthful and do it right. And as we grow, we'll be able to work and do things with complete honesty. Even as you become older, go to high school, go to university and end up getting good jobs or running good businesses because we are honest with our dealings. And our memory verse for today says, Better a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. Proverbs 28 verse 6. Let's say it together. Better a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. Let's say it together again. Proverbs 28 verse 6. Better a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. Let's choose to have and practice complete honesty. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you have reminded us that you honor honesty and we pray that you may teach us, each of us, that we may remember to rely on you to help us to say the truth all the time because at the end of it we'll be blessed in our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.